What are you going to use? I'm going to use. I'm going to use that. Are you serious? No, yes. baby, you can't. Okay. No, no, no. Just use one of them. Huh? Just use one of them. Okay. You seem to have. Which one do you have faith in? This one. Yeah, so use that. Okay. So, good evening. Um, uh, this is not about me loving social media or being obsessed with social media. I'm simply trying to uh, help out, hoping that I can reach out to uh, some people about uh, this uh, uh, COVID. Uh, some people have been um, asking questions. Some are being, some are skeptical. I just want to make a few, a new, a few clarification, and hopefully, I can reach out to somebody out there in relation to this COVID nineteen. My objective is that we can heighten, we can heighten our awareness on COVID and uh, take the precautions um, as uh, advised. So, but before I go into that, let me first uh, express my deepest condolences to the nation for the death of, um, for the death of uh, our, our founding father, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, who passed on today. Um, I'm lucky to be one of those people that, uh, uh, you know, experienced part of his uh, rule as president. And um, I must say that uh, uh, Kaunda really set up Zambia uh, on a foot, especially in terms of patriotism. I think he Kaunda did much, much, uh, he did very well in terms of making us aware of our nation, of being patriot. You know, he did very well. Uh, uh, anyway, I'm not going to say much about that. Um, I, uh, suffice to say, I tender my condolences to the nation, to the family of Dr. Kaunda. I mean, he's a man that lived, he lived his full life, really. I mean, what more would you ask for? What more would you want than what Kaunda had? Anyway, having said that, let me go to the issue that I want to, to discuss. Number one, when did I feel, you know, the discomfort? I started feeling the discomfort on Sunday. On Sunday, and I remember on Sunday, I had it was a full day of political activities, going around campaigning, and part of the things that I did is to go to the dump site. So when I came back, I was not feeling very well, but I thought it is the stench and the smoke from the the dump site, so I ignored the discomfort. The discomfort was on my. Uh, you know, throat, you know, just uh, on my throat somewhere there, feeling a little bit of like, you know, like there is smoke there. So which made me really feel to say, because I was at the dump site and there was this burning continuously, smoke coming out. So I thought it was the smoke that had um, affected my, my throat. Unfortunately, it persisted. It persisted for about three days until about yesterday something else started coming up i think the day before yesterday i was feeling you know rather tired but you know i felt like sorry i give you what me from there sorry i have to give something Okay. 
So, um, uh, today is Thursday. On Tuesday, you know, I was feeling like quite tired. I was feeling body pains. And uh, I felt like, uh, you know, like, um, uh, you know, like when you, when you do a lot of uh, exercises, you know, like you go to the gym and then you lift weights, you know, more than necessary or you lift heavy weights. That's how I was feeling. But of course, I do, I do, you know, gym in the morning. So, but I, I didn't do anything more than usual. Unfortunately, I was feeling this tired. I was feeling my body, you know, just aching, you know. Um, but I really thought it was just about me, me working out or anything. That was on, on Tuesday. Yesterday, things changed. I started feeling hot. I started feeling, you know, having a out headache. But still, I thought, you know, it's a flu because now I was even feeling the nose blocking. So I thought maybe it's a flu that is coming. Clearly, the feeling which I got was that of when you have a flu and when you are about to feel malaria if you have got malaria you know like you're going to have malaria i you know when i was telling one of our helpers she actually said no i think in amkwata for malaria you have malaria that's what she said but in the night things changed last night things changed drastically uh my nose was quite blocked my headache persisted and then the body, I was really shaking. I was feeling so cold. And inside me, the body, the way you feel the body, you know, really Corona is different. Eh? Corona is different. Trust me, ladies and gentlemen, Corona is different. Corona is different. I have never felt like this. I have never felt like this. You know, you feel inside your body, Outside, you are shivering, you are feeling cold. And the shivering, you actually feel like the lungs, the cold has affected your lungs. But the, the iron of it is that on top of your body, inside your body, when you're feeling your nerves, you feel they are warm. You feel them they, like somebody is grilling you, you know, like you're being grilled inside, from inside. It is not a good experience. At that point, I realized I've never felt like this. This is strange. I've had malaria. I've had the, all these other, all these other, um, you know, sicknesses. But the way I felt, it was different. Uh, COVID-19, you feel different. My body was really feeling that hot. And it was aching like, like, like you have been bitten. You know, like the way you do the meat when you want to marinate it, you beat it, you beat it. That's how I was feeling. Oh, my body was so, was, was really just paining. Like I've been beaten big time. That is how I was feeling. And at that point I said no. And it was getting worse. During the day it was not so bad. But during the night, especially around zero, zero, it got worse. My breathing was difficulty. My headache was, you know, persisting. And that's how I went to the hospital. Uh, just before zero zero, I went to the hospital. We were at the hospital just about after after zero zero at um, Levi Mwanawasa. Now at Levi Mwanawasa, I'm telling you, uh, if you haven't been to the hospital, you may, you know, doubt the statistics that are coming out. You may doubt them. You know, when you hear three thousand three hundred ninety four. You feel like maybe somebody's playing around with the statistics. Yesterday night, when I went to Levy, I actually witnessed how those numbers are increasing almost per minute. Because when I arrived there, the reception was full. People kept on coming. Others coming, bringing people with the, uh, you know, on, 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 uh, who are not able to move by themselves. Others were able to move. It was just like like it's not it's not at night. It was not good. It was really not good. So those numbers really people are going to the hospitals, and um, 
of course i was attended to tested and uh, the the results came came out uh, positive but what but how come if my if i was tested positive how come i am home i am home because my vitals especially my oxygen saturation in the body was at 93 the normal i'm su i suppose is supposed to be about 95 95 to 100 around there that is that should be the oxygen saturation in the body but for me it was at 93 and most probably could be because of um, the remedies that i was taking because i was taking remedies even before um you know just as a precautionary i used to steam i used to take uh, you know the ginger and all these other things you know so i think that uh, helped so my oxygen level or oxygen saturation was high and for that reason um i couldn't be admitted in the hospital so they gave me the medicine they gave me the medicine and uh, i came back home but on the medicine again things are very serious the hospitals are running out of you know the necessary medicines yeah? the necessary medicines to cure uh, corona if, if it is to cure or to help out or to boost the immunity at the hospital i only managed to get paracetamol and the immune booster that's all huh? azithromycin that is the immune booster so i got a uh, azetomycin i got yes the azetomycin the immune booster and paracetam paracetam and even the paracetam which i got is not much it was just the, you know for that moment i think he, he, there were only six in the in the sachet only six uh, as it, as this, yeah whatever the immune booster i gave i got seven because i need to drink seven so i got that one i got seven but other medications which were on the prescriptions they are not in the hospital so this is something that uh, we need to consider to think about our hospitals don't have the medicines and um, we only bought the medicines today and i can tell you that the medicines uh, they are not cheap they are not cheap the medicines are not cheap just that vitamin c 1000 what what do you call that 1000 grams yeah the 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 the, the yeah. vitamin c i mean costs about 180000 eight, 180 kwacha and then uh, what is that what is the other medicine azithromycin no the one that we bought the one which was 250 yeah, yeah. then the other one is about 250 so the medicines are not cheap the medicines are not cheap and the hospitals don't have them whilst i was there i saw how the doctor was panicking busy on the phone calling the the center for them to bring oxygen because they had run out of oxygen right there at just at the reception they had run out of oxygen and he was frantically moving up and down calling for oxygen to come so the situation is very delicate and of course you can't blame the government to say they are not buying the medicine medicines surely when the situation is overwhelming like this one it's difficult to, you know to have enough stocks including the you know the testing kits they are also a challenge you know the testing kits they are also a challenge i had to wait uh, for about 30 minutes for them to bring uh, you know the testing kits because they had also run out so clearly you can see the stress under which our hospital facilities are in it is not a joke it is a serious matter which we need to to consider hospitals don't have all the necessary requirements to treat covid and of course you can't blame the hospital the best that we can do is if we can try to uh you know in, um yeah somebody saying vitamin c we are buying at 30 kwacha oh vachan vachanda nonde vachanda nonde problem where are you buying vitamins 
where you buying vitamin C at 30 kwacha ni kui samui kala eh? you are the people that are letting down even this government of yours of PF it's because of you people that this government is failing too much kadarism instead of applying reason and objectivity you just put in kadarism too bad take it from me take it from me we are having struggles we are having shortages in of medicines in the in the in the hospitals and uh, these medicines are not cheap out there and uh, I am feeling, I mean, for me, when I went to buy, just when I went to buy, to buy everything that I was buying, you know, I spent um, 1,430, 1, 1, 1,430, that's what I, I, I spent. Where is that, where is that, that, that uh, it's in the car, yeah? Yeah, the receipt. Anyway, I, I paid that much. Now, you can imagine if I spent 1,000, 1,400, who, how many people can spend that money for them, you know, to survive COVID? How many people, how many of our people? I'm also wondering, those who are in the hospitals, I'm also wondering if they are really getting all the medicines because clearly the hospital facilities are stressed. And therefore, we need to take care, we need to take precautions. We need to take precautions. Um, so yes, I came back because my my uh, my my oxygen situation was not bad, and that's how I came back home. At home, um, we have uh, um, isolated ourselves, myself and my wife. We have isolated ourselves because even if my wife has not tested, it is clear she has it. She has a little bit of a throat. And uh, yeah, of course, she's not she's not bad and everything, but you know, just to uh, to protect ourselves, so we are we have isolated ourselves, and um, we are taking all the medications that she was prescribed uh, to us. Then um, yeah, so that's how that's how come I am I am I am I am home. How am I feeling right now? Um, you know, the feeling of COVID is very strange. You know, you, you feel the body, I'm feeling the body really that weak, weak and aching. You know, right now I have a neck, I can't twist too much like this. I have to bend like this. It's, it's just, it's just, it's just something else. Eh? It's just something else. And it's, it's painful. It's, it's painful. The body pains. The body pains. Trust me, you wouldn't want to go through this experience. Then you are feeling this heat, like you are constantly being, you know, grilled inside you. There is a fever. You feel like you are, you, are, you are sweating and yet you are cold, you know. Not the kind of feeling that we get with malaria because that one, you don't get the body aching. Me, I'm feeling the body aching. Even when I'm sitting here, I'm feeling the body aching. I can feel my entire body aching, you know, con constantly aching. And when you sleep, you can't sleep. You just can't sleep. Uh, I couldn't sleep before until I took some medicine. When I took some medicine, that's when I slept. Today, the whole day, I failed to sleep. I was trying to sleep, but I, I just couldn't sleep. Then my nose, it's constantly feeling, you know, that irritating feeling in the sino, uh, in the sinus. That continuous, you know, you are feeling like uh, there's chili in your in your mouth, uh, in your in your nose. Then in the mouth, you feel like like you have uh, you took acid, and then then your mouth is just dry, like your cells have died, kind of. It's not a nice feeling at all. Please, if you can try to avoid it, uh, you are better off than going through this experience i'm sitting here doing this because i want to make this earnest appeal that please let us not approach this covid 19 with uh, you know uh, uh an attitude that it's it's something that we you know it's just a by the way thing look today how many people have died eh? 
I'm lucky I'm sitting here talking to you. But uh, today as we speak, how many people have died? And even if we go back, how many people have we lost? We have lost a number of people. This is very serious. I thank God that I'm sitting here talking to you. But then, COVID also has got this strange behavior whereby one moment you are okay, the next moment you are gone. You know, the next moment you are gone. So, please, please, let's try to uh, take the precautions uh, necessary. This is, this is very, very serious. Um, what are the challenges? What are the challenges? Number one challenge uh, I see is the attitude. A lot of people still are not well sensitized on COVID-19. We are still looking at it as just one of issues, a by-the-way story. A lot of people are still walking around with masks, uh, without masks. And even those that are putting on masks, sometimes they're just putting the mask on their mouth with their nose left uh, exposed. Please, when you're putting on a mask, make sure the mask, make sure the mask, oh Lord, make sure the mask is on top of your, of your mouth like that. Huh? Cover your mask. They make sure your, your mask is like that. Don't let your nose be exposed. A lot of people, you find that they are wearing a mask and then it is like that. You are not protected like this. You are not protected. Make sure your mask covers your nose up to the chin. Please, please, let us protect ourselves. This is a battle that we need to fight. And uh, we need to win this before it wipes us all out. The other issue is the politics. Unfortunately, in this country, we tend to politicize everything. There are those that think that, no, the government is trying to play around. And then those in government as well, you know, they, are also, have, they also have a bad attitude. They are not setting a good example. They are not setting a good example. Because we have seen, particularly, this issue of gathering people. We have seen the people in government, they are in the forefront gathering people in different areas in the name of political campaigns and the, the so-called roadshows to intimidate uh, their opponents. The opposition have also not done very well because some of the opposition are also doing the same. My appeal is that, please, much as we are in the campaign period, can we try to put the lives of our, our fellow brothers and sisters first before our ambitions, uh, you know, our political ambitions? Let us try to see if we can protect the people that, are, uh, that we want to save. Uh, actually, yesterday when I went to Levy, one of the ladies I found who was not good, actually, terrible, not good. She was sitting on the wheelchair and she was struggling, you know, to, to, to breathe. They were looking for oxygen. There was no oxygen. One of these ladies, I remember that, I recognize that she's one of the ladies that attended one of the meetings that I had in one of the compounds. I don't want to mention the compound, but in one of the compounds, this lady was part of the people that attended that meeting. When I was at Levy yesterday, I actually found this lady and she was really struggling. She was sitting on the wheelchair. She couldn't stand. And they were looking for oxygen, you know. And I, I, felt, I felt bad. I was, I was with that lady in a meeting where I, was, where I had this meeting and, and yet I found her there. So it, it hit me that really these political activities are actually spreading COVID further. And the statistics can actually back this theory because when COVID started, the statistics were not this high in the first wave. Even in the second wave, the statistics were not that this high. You can talk about you now the coldness and everything. We have had the cold before, but the statistics were not this high. 
how come this time around we have high statistics? We have high statistics because there are events which are super spreaders which are going on right now. For me, this is my analysis. Because in the first wave, we didn't have so many statistics. In the second wave, we didn't have so many statistics. This third wave is hitting us where we are doing 3,000. I strongly believe that these statistics are as a result of the political activities currently going on. And on this one, I'm not blaming, I'm not, uh, blaming a political party. I think all of us as politicians need to uh, take precautions. Uh, to see how we can protect the lives of, uh, of, uh, of our people. Politicizing everything is not good. Uh, it can be anyone. It can be anyone. If you look at the people that have gone today, um, I mean, I don't think they thought they would go because of COVID. So please, let us try to, uh, you know, minimize our politics. Let us look at some of the other means that we can use to campaign under these... Uh, difficulty circumstances from my point of view i think government is doing well and i want to commend the civil servants because at the moment it's the civil servants who are running the show and i want to commend them that they are doing a very good job dr malama and your team you are doing very well i'm actually i actually have a feeling that the the, the civil servants have done a better job than the politicians because some of the politicians took COVID as one of the political platform to sell themselves. And they were bringing in all sorts of unnecessary issues. But this time around, the, 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 these uh, civil servants, they are approaching matters with a right attitude and professionalism. I think they must be really commended. Um, I really feel like sometimes I feel like maybe we don't need the politicians. You know, look at Dr. Malama when he's issuing the statements. He's on point. His explanation is thorough. Look at the statement that came from Dr. Mitty. His statement was thorough, on point. Everything is being handled well uh, in, in a professional manner. Unlike when we had these politicians, you know, bringing in their politics. So for me, I am saying congratulations to the civil servants. You are doing very well. And I think many times it's us, the politicians, who disturb you. You can do a better job, but us politicians come in to mess you up. Um, this has, for me, I've proved, by the way, the civil servants have handled these matters. I think they have done they have done very well. Politicians sometimes we can be very misleading. So government is doing well. I commend them. They have employed 700, 700 more health workers. But the issue that uh, is of my concern is the motivation on the health workers. Health workers need to be motivated. I saw it. I saw the stress on their faces. I saw the risk in that, you know, they are in this environment where they have about 20 people who they have to attend to and they have to touch them. They have to take their BP. They have to, you know, take their blood. They have to swab them. There is so much contact. And they are on their feet from the time that they start their shift up to the time that they end their shift. Throughout, there is no time for sleeping. There is no time for sleeping for them. Through and through, they have to wake. So, surely, this is, uh, this is very dangerous. This is very dangerous. And um, uh, I think a government can do something President Ed Galungu, you are still there. You are still the Republican president. I think you can uh, come in and see how we can, you know, um, incentivize these uh, health workers. Let us motivate them. It is not good that at this point in time when health workers are sacrificing themselves like this and we are busy quarreling with them, uh, creating 
uh, uh, disputes, you know, and uh, sometimes, you know, I'm, I was not very happy with one of the statements that came from uh, one of uh, the civil servants uh, on behalf of government. I think he, we need to be humble. We need to uh, take these people with kindness and generosity, graciousness, so that uh, at least we can motivate them. Pretty much, this is what I wanted to, to share. If you, if you feel, if you, I wish, I wish this, this feeling can be projected. I wish it can be projected. I wish it could be seen. It's not a nice feeling. Right now, I don't know. I, I don't know if I will sleep, you know. It's just something else. You want, you're feeling cold. You want to cover, but then you're feeling hot. Ah, and then your body's aching. You have taken this medicine, but still, the body's still aching. And you don't know when it's going to stop. You don't know when it's going to stop. Today, I'm feeling like, am I better than I was yesterday? I can't tell. Because the body's still aching. And I don't know how long it's going to take for me feeling like this. And there's also the fear that, you know, I'm feeling like this. It could get worse or it could get better. So prevention is better than cure. I know it's not easy. I've been trying to mask up and so on and so forth. But certainly uh, there are times when I have been careless, especially when people come to say, let's take a picture, you know, and they ask you to remove the mask. You know, that is not a very good experience. Unfortunately, you are scared to say, no, let me, I can't remove the mask because you're scared of people looking at you like he, you're being rude. Uh, it's a difficult situation. That's why I will really try as much as possible to find other means of uh, reaching out to people uh, in my bid for the position of mayor uh, instead of, um, uh, instead of uh, going out there, going around, risking myself and risking other people's lives. So that is the situation, my brothers and sisters. I just thought that I could emphasize this point. Please mask up, sanitize as much as you can, wash your hands, make sure you maintain social distance. And only if you have to get out of your home, otherwise stay home. I really insist, otherwise stay home. Avoid these political activities that are going on. Avoid them. These events, I strongly believe that they are contributing to the high numbers that uh, we are having. To my fellow politicians, I say, please, can we find other means of reaching out to people other than, you know, these super spreaders, um, you know, events. I know somebody somebody spoke about Soweto and bus stations. You know, look, that, I don't think that is a good argument to say, no, in the markets, how come in the markets we are allowing people? How come in the bus station we are allowing people? But then we are stopping rallies and, the, and other political events. I don't know how it sorts out the problem because, there is, because we, we, are, we are allowing people to gather in the markets. I don't know how it helps us to say, since we are allowing people in the markets, let also, let also the politicians continue a business as usual. I don't know how that helps if it doesn't make things worse. And I think what we are looking at is reducing the, the risk. So if we, Soweto is, uh, is, is gathering people and other markets and bus stations are gathering people, should we increase the risk by creating some other activities again that will, you know, uh, boost the spread of COVID? I think we need to be uh, reasonable. I think what we should be looking at is say, okay, let's let's see, stop this, the, the, the political activities, and uh, not stop, but find, you know, find a way of doing it, and then create, uh, suggest other measures that can be taken in the markets and bus station, instead of creating uh, other events as well, just because uh, the markets and bus stations are crowded. I would rather we look for solutions for the markets and the, and, uh, the bus uh, stations. And my suggestion is that if you're going to the market, 
if you are selling at the market please mask up and mask up properly and sanitize as often as possible especially after receiving money when you receive money you count money please sanitize because money is one of uh, uh, you know the modes that can spread covid uh, 19 otherwise um, thank you very much for for watching uh, let me uh, take a rest and i hope what i've shared will help out someone there thank you and good night